Today we're going to set up differential thrust with a true working throttle cut and failsafe on this dual rotor seaplane with any Spectrum radio. Welcome to Red 5. So in this video I'll be starting with an introduction to differential thrust, what it is and how it works, but if you're just here for the information on how to set it up, feel free to skip to the chapter called Setup. But before we get stuck in a differential thrust, I just want to mention that this is a brand new channel called Red5 with a whole heap of content coming your way around RC planes, drones and cars. We've got setup and tutorial videos just like this one, we'll be doing product reviews on everything that you see behind me and a whole bunch more. That's E-flight planes, Sebart planes, top model gliders, even Hobby King stuff now that they're back in the UK, DJI drones, Tamiya cars, Spectrum radio gear, and down the line we'll be creating a whole bunch of content around model flying clubs in the UK. So please like and subscribe and hit that notifications button so you can keep up to date with everything that we're doing. With that out of the way, let's talk differential thrust. So differential thrust is used to help with your authority on dual prop planes. This speeds one prop up a little bit and slows the other one down a little bit in order to help that plane turn. This is particularly handy for planes that don't have steerable landing gear. Normally you would link a rudder to a steerable nose wheel or a steerable tail wheel in order to help, to help that plane turn on the ground. But in this case what we're doing is we're linking the rudder to the speed of each individual prop. So for example, if we were to turn our rudder to the left, our right prop would speed up a little bit and our left prop would slow down a little bit in order to help that plane turn to the left. So this is the plane that we're going to be setting it up on. The Avios Albatross by Hobby King, which as you can see here has no gear at all. I'm using a Spectrum AR8360. And we're setting this all up on an NX10. But this will work with any spectrum radio and receiver combination. A little bit of a caveat, I fly mode one, which means my throttle stick is here on the right hand side. I thought I'd better mention that in case some of you got confused when you saw me using that throttle stick later on in the setup videos. Now on this plane, I run a 12% differential. That means that on full rudder deflection, one prop will speed up an extra 12% and the other one will slow down by 12%. Now in this video that I'm about to show, I run that throttle at a slow speed, around 10%, so that you can see one of those props slow down to zero. So here we have that rudder in the straight position with both props running at about 10%. But as soon as we turn that rudder to the left, the right prop will speed up an extra 12% and the left one will slow down 12%, in this case to zero. As soon as we straighten that rudder up, both props will return to their original speed and then we turn that rudder to the right, you'll see the left prop speed up 12% and the right one slow down to zero. And then once we return the rudder to the original position, both props return to their original speed. And here you can see exactly how much maneuverability this differential thrust gives me on ground handling. Before differential thrust, this plane had no ground steering at all, but now I can zig and I can zag as much as I want. I've got full control on ground. I can turn in any direction, and this makes a huge difference, as you can see. So let's talk setup. So the real challenge that we have when setting up differential thrust is around throttle cut. And we've got two hurdles in this area. The first hurdle is that we've got two throttle channels and our throttle cut function on our radio will only apply to one of those channels. So we need to add in an extra mix in order to make sure that the throttle cut applies to both props. The second hurdle is that our differential thrust mixers will override that additional throttle cut mix that we've just created. What that means is if we have both channels throttle cut, if your differential thrust mix is active, then bumping the rudder will spin up one of those props. So what we really need to do to get throttle cut working, a true throttle cut, 
is to make sure that our throttle cut is on and our differential thrust mix is turned off. That's normally two switches and that's not very safe or practical. But the solution that I've come up with is to put all of that on one three-way switch. In this case, I've applied that to switch G. So here we have our three-way position switch. Our first position, uh, or I should say position two on this, on this particular switch, this is the position that's closest to me. That position is my throttle cut. That means that no mixers are active uh, and both throttles will be cut in that position. My middle position, this is what I call normal mode. This is normal flying, no differential. It just means that my throttle, when I move my throttle up and down, that will apply to both props and both props will spin at the same speed. Then the forward, the front facing position, uh, known as position zero, this is our differential thrust mix position. So when we apply rudder, uh, props will, will, will change speed. And as you can see, because that mix only, only lands or only exists on that front facing position, when we cut our throttle, that's also turning our other mixes off. So now we're gonna look at how to set everything up in our menus. First up, let's look at channel assign. So let's head to our channel assign menu. We'll scroll down to system setup, hit yes, and scroll down to channel assign. Okay, so as you can see, our number one channel is set to throttle. That's gonna be our left throttle, but you're also gonna need a, another channel, a spare channel, uh, an auxiliary channel that is free in order to uh, assign that to the uh, right throttle. In this case, I'm using auxiliary three, and as you can see, that will need to be set to inhibit on this opening frame. If we scroll down to the next frame, you can see that throttle is still assigned to itself. That's your left throttle. And aux3 will also need to be assigned to itself. So aux3 is, sign, is assigned to aux3. It's important that we don't assign this also to throttle. While that will work, uh, the differential thrust mix won't work if we do it that way. So it's important that throttle is assigned to throttle and our spare channel aux3 is assigned to itself. Now we're gonna apply our standard throttle cut. This will apply to our left throttle only. So let's head to our throttle cut menu. Now it's important to remember that this throttle cut is only going to apply to our number one channel, our left throttle. Uh, this won't apply to AX3. In order to get that throttle cut working on the other channel, we'll put a mix in later, um, but for now we'll add in a throttle cut that will just apply to our, our, our left throttle. So. Our position, our value will be at minus 100. Now this is important. Um, you'll find that uh, sometimes Spectrum uses a default setting of minus 130 for your throttle cut. Uh, it's important that we don't use that. We, we, we use minus 100 um, because we'll be using that for the other channel as well and for all our other uh, uh, zero throttle functions. Um, so you make sure that's on minus 100. We're applying it to switch G as all of this is, and we're gonna be putting that in position two. That's the position that's the closest to us and make sure that that is not on position one or zero. Okay, so we can just test this quickly. We can see that our throttle is working uh, when I move the throttle stick in the middle position and also the, uh, the furthest position, um, the differential thrust position. Um, and as we can see, when I apply that throttle cut, this one goes back to minus 100. So that's our throttle cut. Now we're gonna set up our mixers. There's four of them to set up. Let's start with the first one. So let's head to mixing. Now our first mix is just linking the two throttles together so that when our throttle speeds up, uh, both props will spin. So this is gonna be throttle to AX3, just left throttle to right throttle. 
And we're gonna make sure that our rates are 100 and 100, no offset, trim is active, curve is zero, and your switch can just be on. We don't need to actually assign a switch to this. The reason being is because this particular uh, mix is gonna be active across all three positions in uh, on our switch. Uh, but not to worry, our throttle cut will override this. Uh, so we can just leave that switch on. Our second mix will apply our throttle cut to the additional throttle channel. Our second mix is our throttle cut mix. Now this also needs to be throttle to AX, AX3. What this is gonna do is when our throttle cut is in this forward facing position, this is gonna cut our mix from one throttle to the other and make sure that throttle cut is now applying to both props. And we can have a look at what that looks like, this mix two. So once again, that's throttle to AX3. And these numbers here are actually quite important. Our rate is set to minus 100 and zero, and our offset is set to minus 100. Trim and curve you can leave as they are, and th this is important as well. It's important that we assign this to position two only, not to position one or zero. So our front facing position, our throttle cut position, that is now uh, uh, working on that particular position. So what you can see is if I throttle up here, so I'm in the middle position, both throttle, both left throttle and right throttle are working. When I apply this mix, that then kills both left throttle and right throttle. So that means that both props are cut. And now our third and fourth mixes will be applying our differential thrust. So mixes three and four are our differential thrust mixes. Now on mix three is going to be our rudder to throttle or rudder to left throttle. Um, this will mean that as you, uh, as you move left and right on that rudder, then that particular throttle, left throttle will speed up or slow down. So that will be rudder to throttle, and we can have a quick look at what that looks like. Now remember, this is applied to position zero, our furthest position on, on the switch. It will not apply to position one or two, two being our throttle cut. And I run a 12% differential, as I mentioned earlier in this video, so that is 12% uh, and 12%. Now, depending on your setup, these numbers may need to be positive or negative. They'll either both be positive or they'll both be negative, depending on which way your motors spin. Uh, the way to work that out is to set your uh, switch in the differential thrust position and make sure that it's active. And as you can see, if I have my throttle set to zero, if I apply left rudder, my left throttle will decrease. If I apply right rudder, my left throttle will increase. Remember, this mix is just applying to the left throttle. So, so as you can see, left throttle, left rudder, left throttle decreases, right rudder, left throttle increases. And that's that mix. Let's head back to mix four, which is exactly the same, only this one applies to our right throttle. So rudder to AX3. Once again, apply, making sure that that is applied to the differential thrust position, the um, furthest position on our switch and not to the other two. 12% um, again uh, for both of those, but in this case, I had to run these as positive. And the reason for that is because if we look at our right throttle, if we go right rudder, our right throttle will decrease. Left rudder, our right throttle will increase. It's basically the opposite of what rudder position you're, you're, uh, you're, you're pushing in. Left rudder means left throttle decrease. Right rudder means right rudder decrease. And it's just a matter of working that out. Otherwise, all your other settings can stay as they are. And that's it. So that's our differential thrust and throttle cut all set up. But lastly, we need to set up our fail safe. I use forward programming to set up our fail safe. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So let's head to our forward programming menu. 
Keep in mind that in order to see this menu, to see this pop up on your, on your menu screen, you're gonna need the plane to be powered up and to be bound to the plane. Otherwise that forward programming menu won't pop up. So let's head into forward programming. Remember your throttle cup will need to be on. We're gonna to head to other settings and we're gonna to go to fail safe. Now, we've got two options here, capture fail safe positions. Um, unfortunately, when we've got two throttles, this function doesn't work. Uh, for whatever reason, um, the, it, it centers the second throttle to zero, which means 50% throttle. So we're gonna have to go through and do this manually, and we do that by clicking on the fail safe menu. So here we can see what all of our uh, channels are set to in the event, in the event of a signal loss. And the first, we'll start with both our throttles. So left throttle, which is throttle, we're gonna to set to preset and minus 100. And then AX3, we're also gonna to set to preset minus 100. Uh, so what that means is that on the event of a signal loss, both our throttles will go down to, uh, to zero throttle. What we also need to do while we're here is look at our other channels. By default, our other channels are set to hold last. Now what that means is if you're in the middle of a turn and holding full aileron and you lose signal, um, it will retain that full aileron, uh, which is not ideal because that would uh, end up in a spin. So what we actually wanna do is to center all of our surfaces back to zero. So what we're gonna do is put all of them on preset on zero. And we'll need to go through each of these channels and make sure of that. Elevator, preset zero. Rudder, preset zero gear I don't use, and flaps, I've actually set this to preset minus 100. What this actually means is that in the event of a signal loss, my flaps will actually come down and slow the plane up and hopefully reduce the impact of the inevitable crash. Uh, but other than that, as long as your aux 3 and throttle are set to preset minus 100, um, then this will make sure that uh, on failsafe, um, your, both your throttles will go back to zero. And in order to save those settings, we hit the back menu, just come back out of these manually using the back function, and that will save all of your fail safe settings. So that's everything all set up. Feel free to leave comments and please like and subscribe and hit that notifications button to keep up with everything that we're doing. Thanks for watching and see you soon.